The mountain in his thumbnail is Mount Everest. I'm obviously not climbing Mount Everest, not yet anyway. This is the peak I attempted to climb, and I attempted to climb three, like this one, in one day running. In the summer of this year, I attempted my first mountain foot race. It's officially known as the Yorkshire Three Peaks Challenge. We're now on the climb to the first peak. There's some ants in the distance climbing people climbing up to the uh, first peak. That looks pretty steep. <laughs> it's a 40k route over very technically challenging terrain up and down three huge peaks in the Yorkshire Dales. What makes this route so challenging isn't just the 40k distance or the technically challenging terrain, but the 1,585 meters or 5,200 feet of ascent and then subsequent descent. The climbing on this route is absolutely brutal. And if that doesn't sound challenging enough for a fun weekend run, the hardest part for me were the heights. I'm not great with heights, and there were some points on top of the peaks that really got my pulse going. It's just a sheer drop. <sighs> this video is about the value of overcoming a bloody hard challenge. I've already made a vlog of this run, which is available on my channel. I've put a link to it in the description if you fancy watching the whole run without without my commentary on top of it. I've been meaning to do a review video to cover it as this race was a special one and it holds a very special place in my now much healthier heart. This run was my first real benchmark in my weight loss and fitness journey. Back in 2019, I weighed about 30 stone, 390 pounds or about 190 kilos. And as David Goggins said in a post I found, I was one lost mother. If you're a sub 18 minute park runner, or you can run 100k sub 15 hours, or you're a cat a rider on Swift, then what I say and do in my videos probably won't resonate with you as much. I make these videos as a record of how far I've come since 2018. All right, come stand next to me then. This is my YouTube side. You always have to stand. <laughs> Dad has a camera voice. Why are we, um... <laughs> what's this walk for? Dad wants to get fit and healthy fit and to get used to walking very far. My aim is to inspire as I show you a bloke that falls over a lot. Uh, so. Fumbling along in the dark, literally and metaphorically. I suppose I better try and film something. You can't see me. Um, uh, my torch battery is running out, but we've just gone through the 99k. As I attempt massive feats of endurance for fun and also for fitness and weight loss and everything that goes with it. If you're looking to make changes, but you're unsure of where to start or how to progress, then I hope you find my videos beneficial or at the very least entertaining. Change only happens when the fear of staying the same outweighs the fear of change. In a past life, I was in corporate sales. I'm not anymore. I walked away from that stressful career. Testing, testing, one, two, three. When I made a few lifestyle changes back in 2019. It was then that I changed everything I knew would be a hindrance to me losing weight and getting fit. I walked away from a very successful corporate career I had been working on since I was 18 and I'm now 43. I gave up alcohol and turned completely teetotal overnight and if you knew me in 2018 that was like a goldfish trying to climb a tree. I started to exercise, I counted calories and I went full on tree hugging vegan. I do not look like a typical ultra marathon runner. I could grow a beard and eat vegan flapjacks. Turning vegan wasn't a diet choice. My daughters and my missus forced me into veganism. They forced me to do it. Considering my partner is a great cook and I cook as well as I climb mountains, I couldn't really challenge that. I kind of had to go with the flow. And it turned out to be a really good decision. It was also then when I started my new YouTube channel and I began to upload videos of my weight loss and my fat to fit journey for the first time. I just knew that things needed to change. I needed to lose weight. I didn't know how to do it, so I changed everything. Before I walked away from my career in 2019, I used to be responsible for over 100 employees in a fast-paced, high-pressured corporate sales environment. We review performance, and our end game is to have this group operating at the best possible performance level. Well, good. I can't find the button. I was accountable for motivating and training that large team of people. That was my responsibility. I learned very quickly then that most individuals revert to the course of least resistance if left unchallenged. They take the easiest route, that's inside their comfort zone. 
So I regularly forced myself out of my comfort zone early on in my career that separated me from everyone else around me. And that's when I learned that I'm really good at two things. The first was pushing myself to do better. And the second was motivating others to push themselves to do better. I learned then that hiding in plain sight or taking the easy route wouldn't cut it if I wanted to be successful. I say all this because in the context of fitness and weight loss, it's far easier to sit on the sofa and order food on a delivery app than it is to plan and execute the steps needed for change in your life. When I decided to change my lifestyle, weighing probably about 30 stone or 190 kg, I say probably as embarrassingly the bathroom scales I owned at the time only went up to 27 stone maximum. And it took me ages to get down from whatever the hell I weighed to 27 stone so the scales could eventually track my progress. For me, the fear of staying the same outweighed the fear of change. Right. So, what's uh? Can't see a thing. <laughs> what's uh? What's the time? Yeah. Half five. Half five. Half cool. five. We're at Penny Ghent. We're in the Horton in Riversdale car park. Yorkshire Three Peaks. Ready, steady, and we are officially started. Go. And then, so in 2020, as part of my ongoing plan to change, I convinced two old work colleagues to attempt a walking challenge with me. One I'd read about online called the Yorkshire Three Peaks Challenge. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, and I certainly didn't want to be walking moors and dows through remote parts of Yorkshire on my own. So this is. Oh, careful. I don't know if you can hear me over this bridge. This is. This is. You can see. We're not at the top yet. But this is the steepest route. I attempted this walk, not realising just how bloody hard it was at the time. And I was still far too heavy. And even though I'd lost quite a bit of weight by this point, I still weighed far too much to make this challenge achievable or even enjoyable. It had gone from being a challenge to being an absolute ordeal. I made it up the first peak and down the other side. God knows how, but I do remember how it nearly killed me. I remember how scared I was. I remember how difficult it was. And eventually, after walking for 10 hours straight over really tough terrain and climbing the first of the three peaks, I'd only covered 25k of the 40k total distance. This is when the wheels completely fell off for me. I remember reading that the expected completion time for Able Walkers was 12 hours. We were barely halfway in with the two biggest peaks still to climb and it had taken me 10 hours. At this pace, I would struggle to finish before dark and we started at half five in the morning. I was exhausted. The terrain was now a long and steep climb to the top of the second peak, which I physically and mentally couldn't do. The weather had started to turn into weather I'd never experienced before. Snow and heavy driving horizontal rain. You see, I was born and bred in Bermondsey, South East London, back in the 80s. The only time I enjoyed green open spaces and clean fresh air was when my mum listened to The Archers on Radio 4. So this overweight, former couch potato from Bermondsey had had enough of Yorkshire. I'd had enough of the Yorkshire Dows, the ankle breaking terrain, the climbing, and definitely the weather. I decided to call it. I quit. The Yorkshire Three Peaks had beaten me. The Yorkshire Three Peaks in 2020 still remains the only challenge to have defeated me. And it didn't just defeat me, it royally kicked my ass. And this really wrangled me. It stayed with me from 2020 up till now as the only time I have ever given up on a challenge. My family will tell you that I'd rather be driven home in a St John's ambulance than admit defeat. But I knew just how deep in over my head I was and that the route scared me for a very, very long time. And I remember it being completely soul destroying. Imagine making all these extreme changes a year previous and it not making a blind bit of difference to my fitness or capabilities on this challenge. At this point, I felt as useless and as unfit as the bloke in 2018 did. I knew then that I had to return, but equally, I couldn't return until I was physically ready for the challenge. So having said all that, I returned to the Yorkshire Three Peaks route in the summer of this year. Three and a half years after failing to complete it. I hope you can see the gradient. It's very hard without perspective. I was now lighter, I was stronger and faster. I decided to attempt to run the Yorkshire Three Peaks route instead of just walking it. 
How about this review? Oh. Last weekend, as I'm filming this, I ran the 100k ultra marathon on the hottest day of 2023. Uh, and I was more nervous about running this 40k mountainous trail than running this 100k in 30 plus degree heat. This route beat me in 2020. I now intend on destroying it in 2023. There is a specific route that I need to follow. And if you want to say you've completed it, you need to follow this route. You can do it in either order, but you need to follow this route. I downloaded the official GPX route file and uploaded it to my Garmin watch. I packed my Solomon running vest and I started running early in the morning. Many people try to cover this route for officially organized events. And I recommend that if you're trying it for the first time, do it with people that know what they're doing. But you can also just turn up and attempt it, which is what I love about this race. I call it a race because I'm racing against myself. I'm not racing against anyone else. And that's what I did. I arrived and I just started running. It's so windy up here. So we're at the top of peak one, done. Look at this view. Oh my, oh my God, it's so steep. <laughs> no moaning. We got this. I have no idea of distance. Literally the only thing on my watch is the map. Morning mate, you're right. So this is exactly the spot that myself and my two work colleagues called it a few years ago. I think it's called the Ribble Viaduct. It's the viaduct halfway. Peak three, done. Okay, 4K, back to the start line. Forty meters. And we're here. Done. Hang on. Course complete. I ran this route in eight hours and eighteen minutes. Usain Bolt once said that he trained every day for four years of his life just for one nine-second race, and people quit after not seeing results within two months. Beating the Yorkshire Three Peaks for me was three years in the making. It took me three years to be able to get able-bodied enough to destroy it to go from the person I was when I first attempted it to the person I am now. This video is probably the biggest benchmark and indicator of how far I've come in just three years. In 2020, I quit this route halfway and it took me 10 hours to reach that point. This year, I ran the whole thing in a little over eight hours. This is just a benchmark. I still have a long and exciting path ahead of me. I still have a long way to go. I now weigh 16 stone, so I'm still a heavy bloke and I still have some things I need to do to be able to get down to my target weight. I still have things I need to accomplish, and every day these ambitious targets get closer and more achievable. When I see benchmarks like this, the Yorkshire Three Peaks being smashed, for example, I know that the hard work and determination I've had over the last three or four years has been great. That's real progress. So I suppose my point of this video is don't just give up because you're not seeing immediate results. If you're doing something, anything, then it's working because you're not sat on that sofa ordering overpriced pasties from Greg's on your phone. You're trying to execute your plan, and if you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't matter, because you're still doing more than most. Lazarus Lake, the founder of the brutal Barclay Marathon, said that if you're going to face a real challenge, it has to be a real challenge. You can't accomplish anything without the possibility of failure. Try something new, something that scares you, and if you do get your ass kicked, keep going. Is that a good one? 